Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna answer the age old question, should we use a buffer? Before we get started, please do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe below. Hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get started. If you have ever put a pedal board together, maybe you're in the process of putting a new pedal board together now like I am, then you're gonna have to answer the question, should I incorporate a buffer? Admittingly so, over the years, I think I've done things as a guitarist. Like I've incorporated certain products into my pedal boards or I've used certain picks or strings simply because it was the hot thing, it was the trend, it was what someone told me to do. And in a lot of cases, it was the right thing to do. It was. It ended up working out for me and it saved me a lot of heartache. But I think it's healthy to, at some point or another, stop and question why you use certain products or at the very least, should I continue using certain products? I've done this multiple times in my career and I have to say, it's always panned out for me to question because I ended up finding newer products or products to suit my needs a little bit better. For example, guitar strings or picks. I've talked about this in other videos, but going down that journey and looking for different companies and different strings that could suit my needs a little bit better ultimately led me to finding products that better suits my needs, especially when it comes to the kind of music that I currently do today. And buffers have always been sort of in that category of, I know I'm supposed to be using it, but I don't always understand why. Well, I know why, but I don't know what difference it makes. I don't know if I've ever tried listening for the differences myself. And whether I knew it or not, I've always incorporated buffers into my pedal board builds. Let me explain. Apparently pedals that I used to love and use back in the day had internal buffers always on that I didn't even know about. And it was their version of trying to create true bypass pedals, but those didn't really exist at that point yet. And so they had internal buffers and these buffers were essentially created to help guitarists minimalize or to solve a problem that a lot of us had, which was cable length. The more cable between you and your amp, no matter how good the cable essentially meant that you were degrading sound and tone overall. Not to mention when you start adding pedals, pedal, cable into pedal, cable into pedal, it just added up. And ultimately that would lead to a sound that was less desirable maybe in comparison to when you put the guitar directly into an amp with a short length cable. And as I mentioned, I unknowingly always have incorporated the buffer into my rig. And then years back, I actually started doing it on purpose. For example, the Boss DD500, comes with an internal buffer that you can have on or off, I chose to have it on. The Boss ES5, same thing, I turned the buffer on. So now I wanna know, does it really make a difference? For the sake of wanting to keep my current setup right now, a little bit of a secret for a future video, I'm not gonna show you my current setup that's on the floor right now. However, I will tell you this, I have anywhere between eight to 10 pedals on the floor right now, and I'm pretty much daisy chaining every single pedal. This is my attempt of recreating your typical pedal board setup and essentially elongating my cable length. I'm not using a loop switcher in this particular situation because that would essentially kind of solve a problem in some ways because the loop switcher's job is to eliminate the pedal that is not in use and its cable length so that you can get a much more clearer sound between the guitar, that one piece of product that you're using and then your amp. So for today, I'm daisy chaining and I'm gonna be trying out the buffer on the TC Electronics Polytune Mini Nor 3. Now I want you guys to know something. I have never done this before. Believe it or not, I've never done it. I've just blindly turned buffers on or just didn't incorporate them at all or had them and didn't even know I had them in my rig truth be told. But I'm kind of tired of doing that. I want to know, should I literally incorporate a buffer? I'm going to play this guitar directly into the HX Stomp. However, I have all of these pedals in between uh, myself and the HX Stomp. I also have about six feet of cable between me and the first pedal itself as well. So quite a bit of cable length. I'd estimate anywhere between 10 to 15 feet, maybe less, maybe more. And we're gonna see what my guitar currently sounds like without any kind of buffer in between the guitar and the amp itself. And now I'm gonna turn on the buffer on the Polytune Mini. Now 
Now I could just be imagining things. It almost sounded like I had a little bit of a volume boost there. I'm looking at my left here because I have my 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 DAW up in front of me and I don't see a spike in the wave file. But yeah, I don't know. There was something that popped out to me. Could it be that there's more clarity? Maybe. So for the sake of wanting to not speak before I know it for myself, I'm going to try playing through it one more time. Now, of course, I'll probably be able to hear a little bit better of a difference when I'm actually editing this video and I could a B it for real. But I, I want to see if I can hear something now while I'm sitting in the room with the guitar itself. So let's try it one more time without the buffer. Now with the buffer. Now I'm not gonna fake the funk here, okay? Because I could easily lie to you guys and go, do you hear, do you hear the difference? I don't hear Jack. I don't hear no difference right now while I'm sitting in the room. Maybe there's something that's happening. I do notice a dynamic thing that's happening. Maybe I feel it more than I hear it. I can't identify which one sounds better, worse, more clear, not so clear. Um, so I'm gonna actually throw on some grit to see if there's a difference in that signal. So I'm gonna put on the Broken Arrow. If you didn't see my video on that, it's a great pedal. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna link it right up here. So here's my first stage gain. Here's the buffer off. And now here's the buffer on. Okay, so this is reminding me of when I first tried the HX Stomp. If you guys don't know about that, it's a cringy video for me, but it's very popular one on my channel. It's the most popular video on my channel. I'll link it right up here. That's the HX Stomp versus the Kemper. That was when I first got the HX Stomp. So don't judge my initial reaction to it. It wasn't great, but I eventually obviously liked the HX Stomp and figured out a a way to incorporate it into my rig. But much like my initial reaction in that video, I didn't notice too much of a difference when, when my signal was clean. But as I started adding grit and distortion, I realized it and heard it more and more. And I am hearing a little bit more clarity from my signal um, with the buffer on versus when it's off. What's debatable is what sounds better. And, and that's really going to be up to you. That to me is one of those things that will always be subjective. But now that we've got the, the demo portion out of the way, let's have a quick discussion about the pros and cons of buffers in general. So I know I mentioned this kind of before, but it's important to understand what a buffer actually does. It's essentially supposed to eliminate cable length tone loss uh, is what most people consider it to be. It's supposed to give you some, I guess, clarity, maybe some top end, the same kind of clarity you would experience with a short cable going directly into an amp, right? That that guitar sound that we all fell in love with before we started incorporating more cable length and pedals in between the guitar and the amp itself. With that being said, there are a lot of buffers out there. The TC Electronic is just one of them. And to be honest with you, it doesn't have the greatest reputation as being the most beloved of them all that are out there. That's one thing that's totally debatable amongst guitarists is what buffers actually trust and incorporate within your rig. And different companies have developed better reputations than others when it comes to buffers. And my stance on that is pretty much I agree with it. I don't think all buffers are created equal. I don't think all companies have nailed the buffer. And I do think that they can be buffers that can actually degrade your sound versus fix it. The other thing to know about buffers is that buffers don't play well with every single pedal, polyphonic kind of pedals or even fuzzes. Those pedals that you typically will keep purposely at the beginning of your chain because they sound better with your guitar signal hitting it directly first. Well, they also don't like when buffers get in front of them either, which is why a lot of guitar players end up 
you know, incorporating various routing options to bypass certain pedals when incorporating buffers themselves, or maybe placing a buffer at the end of the chain versus the beginning. Some, and a lot of guitarists actually like to do a little bit of both. They like to put it at the beginning and the end. What is the con of having a buffer? It's just another thing to add to the to the mix, both when playing pedal board Tetris, right? Where are you gonna place this buffer underneath the board if you can? If not, is it gonna take up a space that a pedal could easily take up? Also, the cost of actually buying buffers, the better they are and the better reputation they are, the more expensive they are. And when you buy something that makes what I would consider to be a relatively minor difference, it could be kind of frustrating as a guitarist to know that you have to spend money on something like that. But is it worth it? Honest truth time, by itself, I don't know how much it's worth it, but collectively it is. What do I mean by that? I've said this before, I'll say it again. Guitar strings make minor differences. Picks make minor differences. Buffers, in my opinion, make minor differences. But collectively, all of those things together make a big difference for your tone at the end of the day. In the long run, it, it, your sound will thank you for it. Your tone will be preserved and it'll be increased if you incorporate all these little minor things and minor changes, they make a bigger difference in the long run. So I guess what I mean is yes, I would incorporate a buffer if I possibly could. I don't know if I'm the kind of guy who would buy an external buffer. I'm more of the kind of person who would want to incorporate a buffer that I have access to that has a, a dual function. Again, use your ears because I've heard of people not loving certain buffers or not loving how buffers play with certain Pedals. Well, everybody, that's pretty much it. I hope this little experiment comes out clear on this video. Lord knows I could barely hear the difference. But as I mentioned, these little differences collectively go a long way to bettering your tone and preserving your tone. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comment section your thoughts on the topic. Give me your input. School me and school some of the other people within our community. Be sure to do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon so you get alerts every single time I upload a video. Also, feel free to check out some of the affiliate links in the description box below. You can also donate directly to this channel if you choose to do so using the PayPal link. Thank you all so much for watching and until next week.